slowly exploring what I need Cause dozens of times I swear that I knew in the wisdom, the wisdom, the wisdom was scanty Doesn't mean I was broken so open, I gave and I gave until empty Got it all back, got it all back by myself, now nobody can tempt me Hey everybody, buenos dias, como estas? That's all the Spanish I know. Why am I speaking Spanish? Well, I'll tell that later. Right now we are in front of Electronic City Motors. This is the Royal Enfield showroom located on uh, Hosur Main Road. And the reason why we are here is to check out and test ride the new Royal Enfield Guerrilla. Well, that's the reason I was speaking it in Spanish because the actual pronunciation of the word, it's not guerrilla, it's actually guerrilla. But yeah, here in India, we are going to call it as Gorilla. Doesn't matter what pronunciation it is, the actual pronunciation is. And here is the bike, right? So we have one golden red color here. We have the white and the blue. And then we have this one, the flashy yellow, black with purple. So I have the keys with me. Thanks a lot to Electronic City Motors. If you have any requirement of any Royal Enfield motorcycle, feel free to stop by. The staff here is extremely helpful. Here is the key. Let's go right. Let's discuss the numbers later. All right, let's wear our gloves. Here is the key. Nothing really fancy with the key. Just Royal Enfield logo on one side. The other side, it's empty. That guy passing by is really curious, thinking, who am I talking to? <laughs> Alright, so this is the top of the line which comes with this fancy digital cluster. It looks absolutely stunning, man. Ob I mean, um, in my eyes, among any made in India motorcycle, this probably is the best looking instrumentation. Here is the bike. Uh, quick look, we'll talk about the details later on. First of all, let's quickly um, see what's common in this and the Himalayan. So, the engine, the front part of the chassis, this is the same as the Himalayan. The rear subframe is slightly different, it's slightly you know, raised up and it is shorter. And uh, yeah, the engine is the same, power figure is the same, tuning is slightly different. That is because this one at the rear, it has two teeth lesser in, in the rear sprocket, right? That is to give a better top speed rather than the bottom end grunt and in the front it does not get the fancy upside down showa suspension from the himalayan well it does get the showa unit but this is a regular telescopic fork and these fork boots they look quite nice it's it gives a nice retro look to the bike uh sore points to begin with this gap ah it's so weird why have they given it i mean maybe i think they wanted to adjust the light or something but this gap is very weird. They could have given a rubber gasket, something to cover this up. And then these gaps here, they don't look so nice. But overall, it's a very well-built motorcycle. Looks very handsome. Uh, yeah, the swing arm is totally different. The rear suspension is the same. The travel among between that and this is different because this is not an adventure. So it has lesser suspension travel. That is, I think, 220 mm. This one is about 170 mm of suspension travel. That's pretty much a lot for our in Indian road conditions. Enough of blabbering. Damn it. Let's pick it up. And let's go. Let's ride this thing. All right. So we will talk about uh, the design and we'll go from front to rear. How does the front look? Then the middle part of the motorcycle to the rear. And finally, we'll discuss the prices, the features, and should you buy one, and how does it compete, how well does it stand against its rivals. Let's take this quick U-turn. Oh, it's so easy to take a U-turn. Alright, from the front, yeah, it gets a big fat 120 section tyre, and this bike is running on 17 inch wheels, not like the Himalayan, which is an adventure and the tires are from c8 how do they grip we'll talk about them later when we test it and the headlight yeah it's a familiar unit you would have seen it on the meteor the super meteor the himalayan etc etc the headlight intensity well in broad daylight i do not know if you have used it maybe you could tell me but overall then comes the fuel tank and suspension yeah i will discuss later the fuel tank is really small it's only 11 liters on the other hand the himalayan that gets a 17 liter so uh, yeah I mean if you are a long tour you will have to take frequent uh, refueling stops because I mean the fuel tank is quite small okay this speed breaker let's see how does the bike go oh lovely lovely 
it did not unsettle we did get a little bit of air time there and the bike stayed quite stable in fact to a certain extent it felt a little stiff let's supply the front brakes yeah uh, that is something which I miss I really miss I uh, know that bottom end character of the old Himalayan 410 411 and this one see we are at 70 kilometers per hour if I slow down at 65 there is a lot of knocking there is a lot of stuttering from the engine it's very reluctant to pick up from 60 kilometers per hour on the top gear so yeah I mean because it's not a long stroke motor so although it makes nearly 39 Newton meters of torque but still it does not like it does not have that character then the bottom end character which would actually help you pull out from uh, tricky conditions so yeah swerved there a little bit the signal is open come on guys let's go let's go okay now that we are standing at the traffic light let's talk about uh, the seat right so the seat is quite comfortable it's a single piece seat there is no split seat concept on this thing and the seat height is really low i am 5 feet 8 31 32 inch inseam and you can see i can keep my feet fairly flat on both the sides absolutely no problem at all in fact i can even stretch and i can keep the feet flat uh, there's a lot of room for both the rider and the passenger the passenger does get the grab rails as well yeah overall uh, the seat quality the fabric itself is quite good you don't move around when you're under hard braking or when you're cornering you don't slip from front to back or side to side so clean just that yeah underneath let's say two and a half three thousand rpm there isn't much juice in the engine because again because of the character so yeah and then moving on the handlebar it's nice it's little raised up it's not like completely flat the way you would have seen it on let's say a classic or something so it's raised up and the rider triangle is surprisingly good the feet is slightly rare set the foot pegs you know so you do you do sit with a fair angle in your knees and straight upright the elbows are bent there is no strain on the elbows not on the wrist not on the shoulders and you can do this <laughs> this motor is surprisingly rev happy let's jump this breaker again Ah, I love it. So, now comes the rear part. As I said in the beginning, the chain sprocket, you know, the rear sprocket is down by two teeth compared to the Himalayan. So, the, you know, initial grunt that you get, the pickup is what you used to call it, what we like to call it. That pickup thing is slightly lesser. And uh, that is why, again, the bike hesitates to be in the lower gear see right now again the uh, whatever this uh, tachometer is disabled for some reasons i mean usually they do it but if i am if I'm, I'm holding the clutch right if i leave the clutch the bike will actually stall let's jump over this so that's one character of the engine which is i mean which is really lacking in this and we have certain turns and curves let's see how do the tires hold up and how well the suspension handles it breakers it's handling them really well oh, you can literally hang off the bike the tires are quite grippy they are not sports tires and they are not off-road tires by any stretch of imagination although the no, the tread pattern it suggests that it's an off-road capable but no it is not so i wish i could uh, i had the option of turning off the rear abs and test how easy it is to slide because you know uh, the look of this motorcycle it's quite similar to the indian ftr 1200 if you know what i'm talking about not that beautiful i mean the indian ftr is absolutely gorgeous but this thing with this shorter dimensions with the shorter wheelbase and you know the low down posture it feels like a flat tracker although it is not but i mean if you if you want to you can use it as a flat tracker 
so the suspension is good the motor yeah it lacks the bottom and grunt the seat is good the ergonomics is quite well sorted out and the motorcycle loves to rev so overall it's a good product and the rear half of the design i mean the rear part of the motorcycle it's quite well designed i really liked it the way it just cuts off you know and uh, the the panel that's there on the rear it looks like a duck's tail <laughs> and the brakes are equally impressive it's equally impressive although it does not get the 320 mm rotor at the front it's quite potent all right so we talked about everything about the build quality now is it as good as the triumph absolutely no because i mean come on triumph it doesn't matter i like that motor or not but as a motorcycle you know as a packaging there is nothing better than the speed 400 or the scrambler 400x let's face it that's the truth but does that mean this bike is not well built no this this bike is built decently but yeah you cannot benchmark the triumph against all the motorcycles when it comes to build quality because as i said the triumph is absolutely fantastic the way they have built it the fit and finish the quality of plastic metal and all the panelings they have done even if it's a layered paneling there are no panel gaps and on this thing you do notice the panel gap so build quality wise no the triumph is definitely better much much more superior than this um, engine character if you like a rev happy motor then this is what you should get this revs better than the triumph but if low down torque is something that you want damn it again red yeah if it's the low down torque that you want then yeah this motor look at this it does even in the first gear it is so hesitant so reluctant so the low down torque the bottom end that is definitely missing so if you want that thing let's say you want to take your bike off road a little bit or on the broken tarmac or some places with a passenger with a lot of luggage you will need that bottom end and that's something which is missing sadly but otherwise for touring this motorcycle has a payload of 191 kgs i am a little fat i'm 80 kgs so there are two people like me who can sit on this bike that would be 160 and then i can carry another 31 kgs of luggage which is a lot so can you do touring on this thing absolutely yes you can do touring the seat is nice the suspension is really well tuned roll and field now right now they are the best in business and they know how to tune the suspensions The mirrors sadly are absolute garbage, I mean they are like so small and there is hardly any uh, adjustability in them, look at this, it's, it's flimsy, it's cheap, so if you get the bike, upgrade the mirror, that's the very first thing you should do. <laughs> now comes the price, right, and the competition, and should you buy this, let's, let's understand the competition first, what all other motorcycles are there, so this is a gorilla and there are other monkeys, the monkeys are <laughs> the Harley Davidson X440, that's a naked roadster, the Triumph Speed 400, that's a roadster too, the Hero Maverick 440, that's a budget option, uh, let's pick up the Maverick and the Harley Davidson X440 because they both are from the same factory, same engine, same chassis. Right, so this bike definitely feels much better put together. Uh, the only advantage that is there on the Maverick and the X440 from Harley is that they have a very good, a very torquey motor. They are dominated by the torque more than the horsepower. And this thing is dominated more by the horsepower than the torque. Uh, the Triumph Speed 400 and the scrambler not the scrambler scrambler goes against the himalayan let's say so this is the speed 400 category right the pricing and the dominar 400 well dominar is more like a stepchild to bajaj now because bajaj has been so happy making profit from their you know uh, partnerships with ktm and triumph that they don't give a to the dominar anymore so dominar is ruled out let's not even consider it now comes the speed 400 uh, street presence yes it has better street presence than the street the street looks really small very tiny and but that's where 
I mean the you know benefits or the plus points of the Guerrilla 450 or the Guerrilla 450 ends because in every other aspect the Triumph is definitely better even with the uh, base models right in which this gets the analog digital instrument console uh, the Triumph is definitely better the service inter interval is, is longer in that the only problem is that it looks very small it is very small and it's not very accommodating for a rider and a passenger that's the only concern that I have and then uh, the you know, availability of service centers it's horrible there's hardly any service center and then the quality of service is even worse it's pathetic so if you are okay with that you can pick the tram speed 400 above the Royal Enfield Guerrilla, Guerrilla 450 because again the speed is a better motorcycle let's uh, let's not beat around the bush let's agree with that but if you are someone who is very adventurous and someone who carries your passenger and you like to travel with a lot of luggage and stuff come on then in that case you will appreciate the Guerrilla 450 for the price that it comes the on-road cost I think is at 3 lakh 30 uh, 3 lakh 20 thousand something for the base model right and then it goes up to 3 lakh 50 something okay so I tried to cross that without keeping my feet down on the ground and uh, let's see how long can we sustain one two three four oh, damn it. so yeah my dear friends there you have it the Roll and Phil Guerrilla 450 Guerrilla 450 <laughs> I like the name I don't know how are uh, the sales guys in the showrooms going to pronounce it i need to check are they pronouncing it as gorilla or the gorilla 99 percent is going to be gorilla at least here in india <laughs> fantastic bike yeah really good job by roll and field they could improve definitely on the motor front a little bit more and fit and finish yeah it's okay i mean let's not target the triumph but I hope that this video comes out to be of some help and I hope you guys enjoyed it and if you have try subscribing it's it's free you know and it en encourages me to make such videos even more so thank you very much I'll see you guys again bye bye